Hi everyone. So we're working on the CNC lathe today. For the last year's CapEx, I bought a couple of enhancements for this machine, one of which is a collet draw bar. So we're going to replace this scroll three jaw chuck with a collet chuck. And in the back, there's a long tube that comes to the back with a handle to close and open a 5C collet. And we are going to add that right now. So you can see I've added some blocks of wood here and we're going to take this current chuck out and prep the machine to load the collet chuck into it. Okay. I think all of these are loose now. These are kind of a cam locks for some several studs that hold this this scroll chuck onto the back plate. And we'll pull this guy off. Give it a little WD-40 to help break whatever is holding it in there. Okay, I see what looks to be a little pry spot right here. So let's see if that does, yep, there we go. And I get it walked off of this thing. There's like a little dimple back there that seems to be just right for a screwdriver slot. There's one. I think once it starts to move, it'll just kind of tick tock back and forth. This one may still be retaining it. Yeah, this is the one that was a problem. Okay, they're all lined up, so I'll bet this thing will slide right off now. There it goes. And see how we're looking in here. Ah, it doesn't look too bad. Definitely some old grime in here. And again, I've never actually done this operation before. This chuck has just always been on the lathe since I've owned it. But I did buy this second hand. So yeah, I don't know what the history of the machine is before I received it. But it looks reasonable. So now I'm going to have to clean out this this tapered hole here because I'm sure that the the 5C collar chuck holder probably angle locks in this angled hole. Now the salesman that sold me this this lathe told me this is a really good chuck and maybe it is, but I don't I don't recall what it's called and the badge or the the nameplate has worn off. So let's see what the back looks like. Yep. Anyway, so these are the cam posts that basically pull this chuck up against the reference ring. And all sorts of old grime is in here. I'm pretty sure it can't, it shouldn't bottom out because then we've got, you know, like a over, over constrained position on the concentricity of the chuck. So I think it's all correct here. But anyway, so that's what it looks like in the back. And I'm sure I'll be swapping this thing on and off a lot as my lathe needs increase. And I'm going to get some WD-40 up in there. Because every little speck of anything will add to the out of roundness of our new chuck. Maybe not so much on this outside ring. But I got to make sure not to ding this because this is the reference for the three jaw chuck and a four jaw chuck if I get one. So yeah, I got to be careful about that. So this is the 5C collet chuck or collet holder. Maybe that's the correct term. You got it in this bag here. And I bought all this from, from track or no, from Southwest Industries who sells this track lathe. All right, there it is. So and you can see the taper there. And then this end is where the 5C collet goes in and then is drawn through with a draw bar or a draw tube, uh, which is this thing off camera. So I think this is a locking taper. So I'm debating if I should take all the oil off or leave a little bit of oil because the, the draw tube actually will pull this, this collet holder deeper into the spindle and I wonder what that hole is for. Oh, that's the key. 
Uh, the, okay, let me get a collet. I just happen to have one right here. So this is a 5C collet. It's kind of a nasty, grimy one. I can clean it up a little bit. So this is a 7 8 5C collet. And the 5C collet has, I'm sure you can see all this. Yeah, has thread on the back and then a taper. And then this collet goes into the front of this collet holder. And these 5C collets have this, this groove right here, or this keyway. And this keyway prevents the collet from spinning out of control if you're doing a heavy cut or something. So this hole right here has a set screw in it, which I don't know if you can see down the center of that camera or not. But we want to line up the, the keyway in our 5C collet with that set screw. And, and there's really high precision fit with 5C collets. So a lot of times there's a little bit of a jiggle you have to do to get the 5C to seat correctly. And that's how it goes in. And then in the back, these, uh, this big draw bar, which is this thing, or draw tube, which we're gonna unpack in a second, will pull this, this collet against its cone shape inside. And then also push it back out. So in this 5C collet, and get it back and it's gets pulled down these three fingers clinch down on the stock that you're turning and then when you push the 5c collet back out with the with the draw tube then this collet pushes up and it releases the radial tension and then you can pull your part out stick another one in all right still gonna have a little bit of a piece of foam just in case and we'll just stick it right in it should self-center and lock. Just, yeah, perfect. I'll bet I can't pull it out. Oh, I can. Uh, probably because there's a microfilm of oil still left on this thing. There we go. Okay, so now I can turn and I could probably, yeah, that's seated a little better. So now if I want to pull this out, I got to tap it from the back. So a bar will go into this hole and all the way out the end so that we can keep feeding bar stock through the, the lathe or machine really long tubes uh, that goes through the, through the center bore of the spindle. Okay, so this is the, this is the back tube of the spindle and then they provided this, this adapter and this adapter is effectively, I think, supplies a bearing surface to pull on the draw tube. And they say to basically just slip this guy on. In the past, when I, if I'd had stock coming out of out of the back of the spindle here, I would make all sorts of plastic spacers and stick it in there, like so. And then that way my stock wouldn't whip around too much or it would be contained better. It's probably not the best idea to do this. There was also three threaded holes and I would drive screws in to help contain larger rod stock from, from getting out of control. You can probably read the warning at the top here that basically be careful with stock extending beyond. Okay, so I've already cleaned this surface and we will slip this guy on and I believe it's a pretty tight tolerance. So I'm gonna try to spin and push so that I don't jam up. And it's on there, feels pretty, pretty tight. Cool. And then these three set screws, they say to tighten them down. And then we are going to indicate in this surface using a magnet uh, indicator. Okay, so. All I could find is these stubby hex keys. So they say this is supposed to center up to within one thousandths of an inch or 25 microns. So we will see what happens. But they also have a procedure to shim it to get it within one thousandths or 25 microns. Mm -hmm. Check the face as well as the diameter. Okay, so over here I'm going to manually spin the spindle. I'd say it's plus or minus half a thousandths. And I believe they said that's okay. Or one thousandths TIR. Alright, so I followed their instructions and put the indicator on and started to measure, but <laughs> Uh, they, this plate is like definitely way off. <laughs> they probably could have said, oh, by the way, it's like 30 thousandths out of round when it comes shipped. 
But they want to want you to loosen these three screws uh, after you know I roughly center this 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 alignment ring onto this hub, and then use the indicator to indicate this in. You know, and it's an intermittent hit with the indicator because it's a bunch of spline teeth out here. So I will go ahead and loosen these. Okay, let's dive a little deeper into the functionality of this 5C collet. And these are actually packed with a lot of versatility. So first, obviously, you know, the, so this is the stock we're gonna turn on our lathe operation. And we slide this guy in here. 5C collets do require, as far as I know, the stock diameter to be pretty accurate. So this is centerless ground stainless steel, 304. And we are going to make this part, by the way. So it's a, a simple part, we're just gonna turn down a post on each end of this uh, 304 stainless rod, which has been centerless ground. So it's plus or minus half a thousandths or plus or minus 12 microns on diameter. And you know, you need a tight tolerance for the 5C collet to correctly grab and chuck down onto this as opposed to something like a spring collet. If you flex in too far, basically the stock is just pivoting on the leading edge of this cantilevered uh, time in the in the 5C collet, but in a spring collet like an ER32, which is this one, you can see how there's uh, a scheme where there's a flexure at the bottom and then a flexure at the top. So these will actually I don't know if you can see me do this. These will actually constrict cylindrically. You know, so inside here you can see it's kind of hard to do, but I'm crushing down this serpentine spring that goes all the way around the ER spring collet. 5Cs don't do that. It's just the top flex is, is, flex is closed. You can also get brass 5C collets, which are basically just has only a pilot hole, if that, but the three slits are still there and you can machine a custom hole for whatever stock that you happen to be working with. Sometimes they're called emergency collets, I believe, but they're brass and machinable, intended to be machined. But on the back of the 5C collet, there is an internal thread and an external thread. We're gonna talk about the internal thread. And what you can do is you can buy these plugs. Uh, so this is a, a thread that matches the inside diameter thread of the 5C collet. And on this plug, I've got an adjustable height uh, uh, threaded shaft here that that we can turn and adjust to make a hard stop. And you can see how I ground this one and I actually turned it down so that it would fit up inside of the, of the, um, the shaft of a different 5C collet. But in our case, what we can do is we can set a repeatable hard stop inside of the 5C collet by screwing this, this structure 
inside of the 5C until this, this, this nut here at the bottom closes off and you tighten it down. And then you've got a repeatable stop, which, you know, you can set your stock in there, pull it out, set it, uh, the next piece in, and then pull it out. So it's a, a repeatable, it's almost like a vice draw stop, which is real nice for a milling operation. And on the 5C collet chuck holder, there is a pin that is precise in diameter to this, to this, to this cut uh, reference slot. So you can actually set the position of your 5C. So this isn't very important for a free spinning lathe, but if you've got a, like a, a lathe where the chuck is programmable for positions, then this is very important. In our case, our lathe doesn't do that. It just spins and stops. It doesn't have like orientation capability, but a lot of the new fancier lathes do. So to load this 5C into the tool that you're using, you can basically bring in the, the 5C and then slide it into the chuck, lining up with this alignment pin notch. And then the draw bar through the spindle of the lathe will spin and tighten down or, or draw in the, the 5C into the tapered hole of the chuck itself. There's a very precise alignment at the base of the 5C. You can have a hollow configuration of the 5C. But in our case, since I've already cut out the stock, we are going to do the hard stop built into the 5C itself. The draw tube is going to thread onto this and actually pull and retain the 5C. So now if I push forward on the draw tube, you'll see how I'm going to push the 5C back out. I can't really turn the 5C because of this alignment key. So we have to turn the draw tube from the from the back of the 5C chuck draw tube structure in the, on the back of the lathe. So let's check that out. So you just saw me assemble this, this contraption. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk about how it works. And then this handle here is actually what is uh, kind of configured to connect to the draw tube, which is that long tube that goes through the spindle. Now there's a spline shaft which is attached to a different part of the spindle inside and all of these teeth are can be locked using this little flip key right here. So when I turn this cylinder I should be engaging the threads of the 5C and I think I have. So now as I turn it more and more you'll see that this this cylinder is being drawn in and the travel is less so that, yeah, and, I, and over here at the front, I know that that draw tube has engaged the threads of the 5C because I, I can't pull it out anymore, but I can push it in. And when I push it in, the, the, the pull handle in the back, or the lever, uh, moves. So that means that the draw tube is engaged on the threads of the 5C chuck. So I'm gonna continue to tighten down the draw tube by spinning this, this freed up handle, basically, this large cylinder until I get about the right feel of travel that I'm looking for. And it's a feel thing. And you can adjust it as much as you need uh, just by popping this, this key in and out of, of the closest spline tooth. So there we're, we're engaged. So it is important that when you're setting the tension and the position of the draw tube on your 5C that you do have your stock in the chuck itself. You know, because you're actually what you're doing is you're pulling this this, or the, what you're doing is you're pulling this collet up against the, the the constricting cone of this chuck, and if you don't have a stock piece in there of the right target diameter, then you're you're kind of just uh, tricking yourself because you're collapsing the front of the five C, and then when you're ready to go and put your stock in there, the hole's too small. Uh, there's a cam lock which which keeps tension pulling on the 5C. So I don't have the the 5C screwed in far enough because I, I'm not feeling that that cam lock where basically this this disc there's a there's a cone shape and spring loaded wheels inside of this structure will actually pop and hold. It'll pop past the top edge of a cone shaped steel uh, bore or mandrel inside of here. So here now I can start to feel that. The, the rollers are riding up on the cone. So the tension is, is increased. 
So now I'm going to loosen. I'm going to pull it in a little, and then loosen the the draw tube a little bit, and then I'm I'm basically feeling for the right feel and sound. So let's see what happens. So that was too loose. So let's tighten up the draw tube a little bit, and there that's that felt pretty good, and you can hear how basically the three spring loaded uh, cams snap past the top dead center of this of this kind of cone shape inside of here. We pull back and now that we've pushed the draw tube forward has pushed the 5C collet just far enough out of this out of this quasi locking cone or taper such that the 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 5C will release the part, I think. But it still may be a little too tight. Now, I'll have to I, I have to do 200 of these. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to turn all of the, the one end, including a, a, a straight face on the end of this, uh, of this rough cut stock, flip it around and now I've got, I'll have a reference against a hard stop that I know and I can measure this until, and dial in the exact dimension. And then for the second side of the operation, I'm going to face two dimension so that this shaft is exactly the right dimension and then do the turning operation on this side as well. So I'll probably have two setups. Ultimately, I'm going to do a through bar continuous feed and probably mount a robot onto this lathe to you know, release the collet, have the gripper come and, and pull the stock out, and then re-clamp the 5C, do all the turning operations, and then use a cutoff tool to cut off the, the finished part and then have the robot release the chuck and then it'll pull out more of, of like a, a six foot uh, length of this, of this stock and it'll continue to basically just pull stock through and make finished parts using the robot. So that'll be fun. We'll probably do that in the next week or two. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's start turning down these parts. So I wrote the program and I ran a couple of parts just to check it out. And so that is the end of the part right there. It's pretty simple, just basically a notch cut into the end of the cylinder and cut the length. So we're gonna release the part by pushing the lever forward. And I've got some, these plastic tipped pliers to pull the part out without mount, marring the surface. A little tricky because I'm holding a GoPro and it shot off. <laughs> I have to get that. <laughs> but let's load the next part. So here we go. Let's slide that thing in there like so. And over here we pop the, the clutch again. This thing will spray. So I, there is like a splash guard slash safety cover. And then I will hit start. Go. It has this little sequence where you start the spindle in a slow speed and then I hit feed go. And then we can watch the cut occur. I apologize for the coolant, but I kind of need it because this st stainless is kind of rough to cut. Then over here we can show the path. This huge pink dot depicts the center of the tool. And it's kind of large. I don't know if I can update that size or not, but what are you going to do? But it gives X, Y location and a preview of the path of the tool. And then the big pink dot is the center of the cutting tool. Fairly simple program. It's actually doing the finished cut right now. And then I do an extra facing off to clean up the burr that's potentially there because stainless is gummy steel. So I, 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 I sometimes just repeat operations to clean up the little burr that may be pulled up from the stainless cutting. And then this is another cleanup 
for a burr at the end of the of the, the little notch that we added into the stainless shaft here. And then it goes back to the tool change or the home or, or safe position. And that's it. So we'll pull this out. And then what I'm going to do is reset the offset and then do the same operation on the other side of the shaft. So we'll reload the shaft into this chuck backwards and recut. All of the parts I've already cut the first half and they are roughed to his length and now I'm just going to flip them all over, cut off 18 thousandths and then put the profile in. And pretty boring so let's just do it and I'll be back when we're done. I also picked up this what's called a part tumbler online. Let's see what it's I'm sure it's an import. Uh, legal electric vibratory bowl. Basically all these stainless parts are going to stick in this bowl and turn it on and it basically shakes everything with ceramic media or also sometimes crushed walnuts. So I got some of this ceramic media that we can try. And I bought some more ceramic media from the local tool supply company called, uh, not, well, I mean they resell Vibra finish ceramic media. 3 eighths by quarter inch. So let's see how it looks in there. I'm not at all familiar with part tumbling or part finishing, but I probably should be because it's a good way to finish a whole lot of parts like the ones that we're cutting today. Furthermore, the drawing calls out tumbled parts. <laughs> so now there is a barb at the bottom here, like a hose barb. I need to figure out how this works, but my understanding is you, you load all the ceramic into the bowl to the amount that you want. You add water and what's called tumbling soap. So I, I need to probably read up a little bit and figure out exactly how to use this thing. So I'll be right back. I just noticed that this, there's a hole in the bottom. <laughs> So that, I'm sure that's important to plug. I, well, I can turn it on though, and you can see how it works without any ceramic in it. So there's probably just a motor and that's spinning a little off axis, creating this vibration. Well, let me read up and figure out, I guess at the very least I need to plug that hose barb. This plastic thread is kind of just threaded into this blow molded bowl, so I'm not sure how good of a water seal that is. But as far as I can tell, I, and I didn't read the instructions of course, but I did see online that some people have these. And you add some water. I'm going to see if the seal is at all usable for that hose barb. And I don't see it leaking. Oh, that's good. And I think basically you just wet the stones and then you add a little bit of this tumbler soap, which I got it again at the, the end mill company at the, across the street from me. It comes with this. I wonder if this is, is a measuring cap. So let's, I assume it is, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> Very precise measurements. Then I'll just load, I've got the, this style, these triangles, which seems like all of the, the China-made uh, tumblers have a bag of this. There's some people who rebrand this that I've seen on, on the internet, but it, it all comes from one source in China. And then this is the stuff that I bought locally. So with my parts, they're kind of small. So what I may wind up doing is dumping all of this in because I've got those sharp corners, inside corners of the stainless steel shafts and just dump it in. I may be doing this wrong, but we'll find out. All right. So, well, that seems like a decent amount. So maybe I'll just hold off on this other stuff until I get more tumblers or who knows, maybe I'll even return it. Um, I don't know. So, the question is, should I turn this on with the lid off? or not. <laughs> I've seen videos where these run with the lid off, so let's, you and I will find out together. Maybe I'll just pulse it. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. 
Looks like I need some more media or less water. Eh, that's kind of interesting looking. Yeah, so the stones are rolling up the sides and then down the center. And then the whole mass is slowly rotating this way. All right, so here's some of the stainless shafts that we've been working on over there on the lathe. So I'll put them in and see what, what how they behave. I'll put it in the corner there. And then they go. Yeah, and they just continually tumble over and over on each other. So this may be enough of the uh, of the media or the you know the the abrasive triangular ceramic bits. And I think you let this run for like five to twenty hours, depending on the the degree of finish that you want. It probably also depends on how sharp and new the media is. So. And then we got this lid. You put this lid on. Oh, that's funny sounding. Let's see if I can thread this thread on. There we go. Okay. So as I turn more of our parts, I'm going to take this lid off and then put more stainless parts in there and just let it basically vibrate for several hours. All right, so I pulled some samples out of the tumbler. Here you can see how they look. They look pretty good. Nice satin finish on them. So I'm going to take these and a whole lot more and deliver them to the customer. And I'd also like to thank everyone for watching and a special thanks to my patrons on Patreon who help support this channel and make it happen. And if you'd like to contribute to this channel, I'd appreciate it. You can check out Dragonfly Engineering on Patreon. And also thanks to my subscribers and viewers. And if you want to watch more, then click on the subscribe button, please. And you can also hit the little bell thing as well, which will remind you of new shows. So, and to close out this episode, I've got some footage from skiing up in the Sierra Nevadas from exactly one year ago. Not this year, but last year. So I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys next week. We may be working on a mold or a tool changer for the lathe that we just worked on. Not sure yet. Thanks a lot. Uh, goodbye. Here we are at Bear Mountain in, outside of Yosemite Park in, in Northern California. Doing a little snowboarding today. Enjoy. Yeah, your gloves probably right where the moguls are at that hill where the wind <laughs> hit it and knocked it off. Oh, there's a ski pole. You can down you can be down a glove but up a ski pole.